Right. Um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. <clears throat> Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay, so next we do the call, the vote of order, <laughs> oral attendance. Hallie. Here. Dylan. Here. Doug. Here. Um, and I'm here, but Gaston is not. So we are four here with one absent. And um, next up on the agenda is uh, public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Very oh, many. Have, oh, sorry. Uh, we're just doing public comment, but I don't think right. anyone, no one's here for public comment. So, okay. On to the renewals. Is that right? And yeah. So the one thing I will note is that, um, I did add university liquors into the liquor license renewal, um, section there. Okay. Um, I do not believe they are, um, able to be approved as they, um, uh, did not submit a complete application and are no longer in control of their premises. So I would, um, exclude that one from any vote. We the board probably need to take a, a negative vote on renewal for that one, just out of okay. a belt and suspenders approach. Okay, and that's that's number seven, Pavan Inc. doing yes. business as University Liquors. Okay, so why don't we just do um, a mo some kind of motion to ap approve all except that one, and then I don't know how do you want us to do that so that it looks good. Yeah, that could work. Everything else should be uh, should be renewable. I would just say the usual um, caveat is subject to satisfying all requirements with the town. Um, and then that one can be handled separately afterwards. Okay, Doug. Um, just a quick question. Did you, get, did you send out the agenda for today? I don't know that I've got a copy of it. Um, yeah. And if not, if, you display if it. If I didn't, I did just send one in response to Alyssa's email. So that it should be in your inbox from that. Uh, Apologies if I didn't send it earlier. I posted this one on Friday because I realized the posting deadline would be pretty early on Tuesday. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know if I have this one. I have the one with Kaiju in it. Is it that one? Yeah, um, it's just, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and there's a the wrong date there too, but it was posted correctly on the website. So, that should be fine. We're for notice. Whoops. So I guess I, I, the question is again, just seeing this, uh, do we wanna do all four types of license in one fell swoop? And just exclude the, the and now I'm forgetting which one we need to exclude, but. Um, the university. Yeah, university. university. Yeah, can um, we do that? Yeah, if, you, that? You, if you'd like, I don't think, I don't see any reason why not. Okay, but we did okay, them. So I'll move to renew all license listed on our agenda with the exception of, let me find it here, I'll read it out. Uh, Pavan Inc. doing business as University Liquors, 6 University Drive. Thank you, Doug. I should say pursuant to all other details of application renewal being completed uh, in order to, to fully license them. Great, thank you. Is there a second? I actually got a question before we second that one there. Um, so just hypothetically, if, if we, you know, so we, 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 we had perhaps issues with, with people and uh, violations they may or may not have committed in, in the past, we wanted to, to do something about that. Do we, are our hands tied, Steve? Do we still have to do just some sort of, we just approve here, there's nothing we this deal is a with good that. question, um, and one I am not fully prepared to answer off the cuff. I suspect if there wasn't a renewal, there would probably be um, some cause for an appeal to the APCC, 
And um, I don't know exactly how that would go. Um, I think that's an interesting question. And okay. uh, that's probably yeah, something we can look into. I think there okay. I think there is case law on that. Yeah, Doug? I would I would just suggest it's it's probably a circumstance where it's difficult to do it during the renewal process because it, you know, if you're going to revoke somebody's license, um, you probably want to do it through a more formal hearing process. But would be my guess what they'll say. Just a guess. Um, I mean, technically, yeah, you can you could you know not renew anybody, but you kind of have to have reasons for not doing it that are and give them an opportunity to sort of make their case. I think. But. Well, I. Uh... I think we've got some some stuff to discuss between now and the the next time we do the renewals, but uh, <laughs> let's not let's not mull it over too much at an eleven in the morning meeting that we're throwing together. I'm just going to go ahead and second this one for now. All right, super. Thank you, Dylan. Any further discussion? If not, let's take a vote. Um, Dylan. What I? Allie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye, that is five to zero. All the licenses are renewed. And do we need to vote separately on Pavan Inc? Yes. Okay, so how do we? How does this go? Yeah, Doug? I'll make the motion. Um, okay, great. I'll move to not, to explicitly not renew uh, the application for Pavan Inc doing business as University of Liquor 6 University Drive due to them being unable to properly uh, meet the requirements of a, of a license renewal. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? Nope. Let's take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. Um, that has been approved. That motion has been approved, which denies the renewal of university liquors. All right, great. So that takes us through, so that covers all of them, Common VIX, Live Entertainment, and Auto Dealers renewal applications. And we can go on to discussion items, Availer Liquor License Application Procedure, and I um, think we'll go through this kind of quick. So was there an update on this one? So I think um, as we left it last time, um, <coughs> we got a good sense of what the board can and can't look at. Right. Um, we got a sense of the different avenues available to the board. There was either just first come first serve or just holding one hearing. Um, and, uh, and, um, and, you know, just deciding on whatever had come in at that point, I think the board was in consensus to do the latter of those two options. Um, and, um, so I think what remained to be decided was how long of a period to, um, to leave the, uh, the renewal period, you know, at what time to hold the hearing, I guess, what the due date would be for any applications to be considered for that. And when, when do we um, start accepting them and how do we give notice? And I mean, I guess to just review my understanding for those who, who aren't here, um, it's okay to say when we're going to accept them and then review them all. What we need to be aware of is that once we approve a license, we can reject all the rest because there isn't a license available. We don't have to give reasons. Right. On the other hand, the question is how would we arrive at knowing which one we want to make a motion to approve? And that becomes um, uh, an interesting question. One approach would be to just be noting what we like about the different one so that we're not giving the reasons for rejection and at the end we just somehow reach a consensus about which one we like the most mm -hmm. and we're approving that one because we like it the most not because we've made a negative judgment about any of the others and then at that point we um, move to approve that and we don't need to explain any of the denials because there isn't a license available at that point um, and uh, so the question then for us one was, did um, the town attorney draft any any language for, for us to look at, Steve, for an announcement? Um, I think we were going to um, come up with that, and um, I think I'm, I think I think the the the, uh, the best way is just to keep it simple. Okay. Um, and I know that we identified those baller in factors from that appeals court case in two thousand, mm -hmm. um, and maybe we can touch on that a little bit. I mean, I did think we'd run it by the town attorney before we sent it out. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, I think it would just be simple. You know, there's a, this type of liquor license available. 
Um, you know, the board will be considering, um, you know, all applications submitted by X date, um, you know, looking at, you know, location and public need, um, or maybe even just public need, because I think that's really what Ballerin um, kind of delved into. Um, and, um, you know, run it by him, make sure that's fine. And, um, and we would put it out, but I think, uh, keeping it simple is probably the key. Yeah. Doug and then Gaston. Just a quick thing to follow up. <clears throat> so I think that one way to approach would be, and I think this falls into lines with, with what Gaston was saying is, is, uh, sometimes when you do a request for proposal, um, you articulate the things that have greatest value that you're sort of using as the metrics for, for making a determination that way. Um, people could potentially augment their nuts and bolts application with with that, um, you know, details about those things that sort of align with what we're what we're seeking. Um, obviously, we have to be very careful, as as Steve noted, the sort of public good kind of thing. But we could potentially kind of define define that a little bit if we wanted to shape the conversation a bit. Um, I mean, I, I agree. It's it's a very tricky thing to do, um, but I think you know, just out of fairness. To folks to give them a little bit of a frame of what we're looking for, and then you know the time frame to collect things, the time frame review, and the decision date are going to be the pieces we need. Okay, thanks, Gaston. So I I, um, I think we should have that conversation that, that Doug mentioned. Maybe we can have it after the um, kind of logistics pieces. And on the logistics, it seems especially if we have things we want to point out that we care about, we should give a, a decent lead time. And, and I would suggest not even say that we're going to start accepting them after a decent lead time so that places don't feel like they have to scramble and, you know, get ahead of others and so on. So, I mean, I'd be inclined to give give folks the month of January to get their ducks in a row. I don't know if if that seems in, in the right ballpark. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Yeah. Hallie? Yeah, I actually thought Alyssa, what she forward is about the select boards process, the two months seems fair in that you're, we're gonna ask people to secure a lease or at mm -hmm. least have an available property. And then we did adopt our liquor or alcohol regulations. So that is a starting point because um, it states what we consider for applications. I think that's a good place to start when we're defining what we're looking for since we've already kind of put that out there for the public to look at. So if we started accepting applications in March, perhaps would that or be a good that, time? Do you think that- I think we give them two months. Two months? I, I think the two or months two was months. To, until the hearing. Oh, until so the we hearing, could give, okay. We could give a month, we could have a, a, well, maybe we could have a submission window during February and meet in the middle of March, I don't know. The one one concern I have, I don't know if the board, I don't, I don't know if we can not take an application that's submitted. Um, I don't well, know if that, I, I believe, I think the statute is written in such a way that the, um, you know, the, 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 I don't know if there's any way we can not take one, even if, even if there's this timing thing, we could take it and then just not do anything with it for a couple months. But I think if somebody walked in the door on January 2nd, I don't know if yeah. we could say no. Well, but we don't, yeah, I mean... I, yeah. Okay. But the, uh, okay. What I would suggest about that just is is the following. Like, I think you're right. We may have to accept the application. But I think the other thing you my you know suggestion would be that Steve, when you get those, uh, to to say to them, you know, there's a there's some additional information that we may request or we're, we're going to give to the public, you know, to others that might be applying. You may want to come back and augment your application with us, um, and so just so that they have an opportunity to, to perhaps refine what they gave. Uh, you know, after the fact, because uh, again, I think you're right. We can't, once the license is available, anybody can apply from that point till whenever, but you can indicate when we might be doing the hearing, when we'll review the applications, that there may be additional things they want to review and, and perhaps augment their, their application with after they see what we put out. Yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Um, <clears throat> procedurally, uh, the way we, we think about doing this, uh, when we actually get to the meeting itself, uh the way it's playing out in my mind let me know if it's it sounds the same to you guys are we gonna just take kind of uh everybody's application in we're gonna just kind of hear what everybody has to say um maybe ask some clarifying questions and then kind of move into a discussion amongst ourselves where we talk about the positives 
and then maybe make a motion kind of thing? What what would uh does that kind of sound procedurally what we're planning on doing? I think uh, Brian Riley had mentioned we could do it where you know each application the public hearing would be open, they'd hear the testimony, ask any questions, the public hearing would be closed, and then instead of moving right to a motion on that application, we would just move to open the next public hearing and then close that one and go through them all. And then once they're all closed, the board could have discussion and then there would be eventually somebody would make a motion to approve one. And then um, if that passed, then um, there would have to be a move to deny all the rest of them because there was no license available anymore. Yes, Tom? And depending on the number of applications, we could schedule this over consecutive um, meetings. As um, my yeah, if uh, if yeah, if we had that many, the minute taking would be a bit of a nightmare because you'll have to record all the opening and closing of, of all the, yeah. the hearings. <laughs> so the so what's the next step? Do we have to get we put the announcement out? Is that right? So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to put the announcement out. I can I can draft something up. Um, I mean, okay. I think it's an interesting question, Doug, about um what we put in there because um you know rereading re Brian Riley's email about all this um it does seem that the board um you know he says the, well the board does have discretion in considering any license application when the ABCC reviews a denial that is appealed it generally looks like looks to the so-called bar and factors in assessing on appeal whether or not the authority's decision was reasonable um and that says um you know, uh, the appeals court said public need in, in the literal sense of requirement is not what the statute is about. Rather, the test includes an assessment of public want and the appropriateness of a liquor license at a particular location. For example, one <coughs> might hesitate to authorize a license for a bar across the street from a public school, considering of the number of existing dispensaries. And I, I think they mean liquor in that sense. In a locality is, the pro is, the, is a proper concern, as are the views of the inhabitants of the locality in which the license is sought. In making its discretionary determination, a licensing authority may take into account a wide range of factors such as traffic, noise, size, the sort of operation that carries the license, and the reputation of the applicant. Um, so he says, and then Brian Riley comments, um, factors such as noise, traffic, and size are therefore valid considerations. However, th these three factors mostly apply to a brand new location since the transfer of the license from one business to another at the same location would not tend to increase these concerns. Okay. Um, number of existing dispensaries in a particular area might be a more difficult argument for the rest for argument to make for restaurant licenses and off-premises ones, but in principle that could be considered. Um, this factor allows the board to give preference for a lesser area town, for example, rather than just adding another off-premises license where there are already several in place. This all depends on the specific um, facts regarding the applicant in the neighborhood, but just to show that the board does have to some discretion deciding whether the app, uh, application will serve the public good as vague as that term is. So, uh, Gaston? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I would suggest that we identify um, the, any documents that set forth like the, what, did we see like the pub, the town, the design vision? What, what are these documents called that the town has? The, we do have the master plan and there are, a few, yeah, there are a few things in there that. Um, so I think we could say that um, the, the, the board uh, is interested in applications that align with uh, the, the vision um, set forth in, you know, vision and requirements set forth in, and then we can have the master plan. We can have our, um, the guidelines and anything else in there that and so that we're inviting uh applicants to actually make the case for us that the way they want to put on the business and where has that alignment and so they're kind of we're inviting them to do the work for us yeah i i think i think that's a really good point that you've made um you, you know guest on you and doug and um i do think we'll just want to kind of toe the line though between um, I do think it's really important to kind of let people know, you know, kind of generally what what the board is looking for, but also he, not hew the board in too much in particular things. You know, there may be something that um, is technically aligned with the master plan, but the board feels like is not um, a good location. I wouldn't want to necessarily um, say that the that, you know, these this will be completely what the board is basing it off of. But I'm sure we can craft some language saying, you know, the board will be you know, you know, reviewing the applications based on the public need and maybe taking into account, you know, the master plan and um, neighbor, you know, neighborhood needs and traffic and all these things. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so 
I think that the um, uh, why don't we take the first pass and and let you um, comment on it, Steve? Yeah, that sounds great to me. Okay. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, let, I mean maybe let's let's identify what we want to say and and uh, because it's really just a few a few um, sentences that we're looking at. Um, uh, so we want to have the hearing March fifteenth. Does that seem too late? No, I think that sounds fine. I mean, our, or what, what's our what's our 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 nearest um, session to that? It would be March sixteenth, I think. March sixteenth. Okay. Is a I'm looking. March sixteenth is a Thursday. Yeah. Um, ap application submitted um, uh, uh, by the end of February. How about by March first or by February twenty eighth? By um, what's it, what day of the week is that? Uh, the twenty eighth is the Tuesday. Uh, March second is a Thursday. We want that gives us two weeks to review them. Okay. Does that seem all right? A, a, a Thursday is a deadline, Steve. Um, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to count up what the uh, what the notice date would be. Yeah, you're going to need some extra time, right? To... And we're I mean, going to need time as a group to go through them before the meeting. Yeah. Um, I so would say so we have to have the advertisement in the newspaper 10 days before um, the hearing and generally I mean so if that would be a Monday generally we would want to get that in on Wednesday just to make sure that that goes smoothly um, so I would say if we wanted March um, 16th we would set a requirement to have them in by um, I don't know the Wednesday before the uh, the twenty second of February maybe because we if we have a bunch of them we'll want to just make sure everything goes in right. We'll need a little time to to post it and everything. Close of business February twenty second. That sounds that sound good. To me. That's yeah. great. That sounds um, good. Uh, so the 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 board requests applications. Um, I mean, I guess uh, is it okay? Can we give you something, Steve, that has some brackets for the for some detailed language that? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Request applications for the name of the license. Um, uh, okay, and so we um, uh, the board is particularly um, the board is interested in um, applications. Uh, we'll review. We'll review applications. In light of the um, in light of considerations uh, set forth in the master plan, right, or with preference given to those licenses that. Well, I guess here's where I'm taking Steve's point of being kind of just a little bit open ended. Um, okay. And saying like we'll review it in light of. And yeah, maybe we would center the public need there first and then kind of, and then pivot into in light of. And how do we uh, articulate the public need? Uh, I think that's what Ballerin was looking at. I think public need is what it says in the statute. And then Ballerin was kind of diving into. In light um, of public need, uh, we'll review. Um, uh, review towards the public need. Based on um, based on public need, and in light of uh, based on public need, and the board's got regulations. How do we call them? Yeah, and in okay. light of considerations set forth in the master plan. Um, Steve, could you give me uh, sharing privileges? Oh, or, absolutely. I have them? Yeah. Did that work, Gaston, as a co-host? Okay. Yep, perfect. Um, so what else do we need to say besides this? Uh, and in need of consideration. And um, and community 
um, feedback? Yeah, like yeah, that. Like that. <clears throat> okay. Do we want to just kind of like uh, copy and paste some of that that uh, legal criteria for which we can uh, base some of our decisions? So kind of everyone knows that. Uh, like the traffic consideration, number of locations in that area, proximity to uh, things like schools or whatnot. Do we want to include that in there? Maybe broadly in the master plan. Yeah, we could just include hyperlinks to the master plan and our regulations. Yes. I mean, we could we could reference that decision. Uh, in, we could say in light of consideration set forth in the master plan and um, and uh, and and in the we could just reference the case if people people want to look it up. I don't know. I like that. I, I think it's going to yeah, be one of our criteria fine. we can be okay. uh, forward about that. Um, uh, case, um, case name. Yeah, it was Ballerin versus the licensing board of Boston. And um, I, don't, I don't think the board is required to take anything into, you know, I think if the board said, oh, I don't care, I think it's fine for liquor store to be next to a school. I don't think that's, that's any problem. It's just really, those are kind of the reasonable and the yeah. reasonable things the board could take into account. Yeah, and I think here uh, it's a very. We're just saying these are these are the things that we're going to give light to in our that 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 will take up air. I mean, so anyway, I'll fill in the details there. I think um, we uh, we can approve a ten story liquor store. I guess we really wanted to. Um, do we want to formally request? Do we want to provide the community a way of giving us feedback? Well, won't they do that at the hearings? I think that would have to be at a public hearing, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, we won't have a way of getting written um, written uh, feedback like the town council does? Well, we can um, we can make sure to post the full packets online and, and post the full agendas and maybe even do it early. And, um, you know, people can always write to, to submit comment if they'd like. Um, but I do think any any kind of consideration that would have to be at the public hearing, and that'd be the the best form yeah i would agree with that i'd also suggest that i mean i think mentioning that we're seeking the public comment so you know if we were advertising the license being available and the dates and such we could also you know more generally put in oh we're also seeking public comment relative to this you know for community feedback um you know please note the hearing date and reach out to steve mccarthy if you are unable to attend that and want to offer comment, something like that. <clears throat> uh, do we want to also say it's listed or, or prior to the hearing via email or something like that? Can we do that? Is, it, does, is that going to create a, a problem for you to yeah. get feedback, Steve? I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand your question, Dylan. Oh, just like do, do we want to say rather than if, if people don't necessarily want to come to the meeting, uh, and, and give in-person feedback. Just want to send an email with uh, some of their feedback. Um, do, do we want to invite that or make it clear that they they can do that? Yeah, I think I think we can make it clear they can. Yeah. Okay. So no CBA, we get we usually get a lot of emails uh, based on projects um, and not just people showing up to the meetings. Okay. Um, um... Okay, I mean, I think, is there any other element that should go in? I, I, I think I, I, these seem like the key nuts and bolts as far as I can see. Yeah, I think it looks good. Yep. All right, okay. Then I'll so just wanna, send that over to, to don't Steve. Want too much. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, I'll run that by Brian Riley and um, we'll post something very similar on the uh, website and maybe send it to the press for the end of the week. Okay, super, thank you. Um, so are we going to do what's our next topic? Rental registration, Gaston. How is that yeah. going? Uh, well, I, I can. I um, Hallie and I met and we um, reviewed the the documents that Mandy uh, Joe Haneke had sent around, and uh, we made some notes. And so um, 
I guess I I'd be happy to highlight the, the kinds of issues that we spotted and the board can decide how we want to follow up. Um, I, I think it would be um, helpful to in, invite um, Man Mandy to come talk to us, uh, but we may wish to highlight something in particular that we're concerned about. So if, um, if you all, uh, if, 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 if we wanna give time to that now, I, I could actually go ahead and share the document that we commented on and, um, and make some of those points. Should we do that? Does anyone wanna look at it now? Yep. Okay, why don't you, can we, is I'll, it? I'll try to make it, I'll try to make it quick so that, yeah. um, um, so to, just to put this back in, in the, um, in front of you, you'll recall that town council is considering making us a kind of an, have some kind of enforcement or hearing role. And right. what this proposal does is highlight um, that the idea is for us to <coughs> be um, a review board, an appeals board. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first comment that we noted in this document relates to our power that is being proposed here to enter into a consent agreement um, with, with an owner. And given that the, um, the penalty of suspension, which is a very aggressive penalty, is also completely undermines the goals of the town to have housing, right? So I, I think that we would actually probably be motivated to do consent agreements a lot because mm -hmm. the, 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 the hardest penalty is very much contrary to the, the public interest. Um, and so the question that we had is, how do we actually, how are we relating to the, um, to the uh, principal code official, which is um, uh, 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 blanking on his name, Steve? Uh, the building commissioner? Yes. Rob? Uh, yeah, Rob, Rob Mora. Um, and so are we, we're supposed to be settling an appeal between the landlord and the town, but we're also not, um, we're not specialists. And so we're going to be, our most um, authoritative source of information is going to be one of the parties to the appeal. And so I just, uh, I guess I just wanted us to, us and the town council to think through a little more how we're supposed to be um, engaging with the principal code official in these appeals. Um, because we know that we're inclined to support the town and carry out the town's goals, but in this case, it's an adversarial hearing between uh, a landlord and the town. Uh, so that was one, one issue. Okay. Um, there, um, there are uh, potential administrative fees and um, this just falls into questions that we have about the text. I don't think we need to have a conversation about it so much as this is a question that um, we're curious about. Okay, who sets that fee? Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're wondering um, if there's a violation of a consent agreement, um, then uh, do we have um, the, who, de who decides what the penalties are during that consent agreement? Is that us or is it Rob Mora who um, uh, you know, assesses that there's been a violation during the consent agreement and then what should be the consequence of that? So this is a similar kind of issue um, that is raised because we're being asked to be an appellate court. Right. Yeah. I do a quick question there just on that. Um, could that sort of, could that, the action of violation, uh, could that be something that had or is articulated within that consent agreement, perhaps? I, 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 absolutely, um, uh, Doug. I guess um, what I'm raising is that uh, we're, not, we're not expert to know whether like the way that they repaired the roof or the way that they did this actually addresses right. the issue that we're gonna have to basically rely on um, on the code official to inform us about whether there is a violation. Um, and uh, I guess, again, 
the thinking through what a consent agreement would be, what penalties should be. All of these are, are things that um, it, it's not clear what our competency is. And, and therefore, how are we going to relate to our best source of information, who's also one of the parties in this adversarial hearing? Right. Um, so that's kind of the main policy point. And then beyond that, I'm just going to other comments we had. It was the point system that gave us a lot oh, of yes. concern. Yeah, do you want to explain that one, Abby? Sure, briefly, that there's all kind of series of points that you get for violations. And are we, yeah. Yep. And there were some that we just needed to get more information on. And is it each yep. violation or each date that you get a point? And some seemed really hard for the owners to rectify if they have a bad tenant, if that makes any sense, like cleaning the snow or what I'm trying to look at the refuse, like if they the tenant doesn't take out the trash or do that, it's tricky, yeah. we thought. Yeah, I mean, some of the, um, we oh, know the sexual, that some, yeah. of the, um, some of the things that'll get a landlord points are clearly based on tenant behavior. So it relates to the capacity to, um, uh, you know, control <laughs> your tenants. But I guess what the reason why the point system is so important to get right is because if you you're you're using points, it means that a certain number of points has a major consequence, and that's exactly what um, you know parties are going to want to appeal and come to us to adjudicate. So we need to feel like the point system makes sense, or else we're gonna we're gonna be a mockery of ourselves. When we're right. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a lot. Of I mean, if you're, if you're looking at them on the screen, I mean, some of them are hard. Like if you rent to minors, like unless you have a chaperone on weekends, like they could engage in underage drinking. And is that the tenant's response or the landlord's responsibility then mm -hmm. if they're getting points for that? Yeah, um, the other thing is the way this is shaped is gonna change how some of the leases are written actually, because things that landlords have traditionally placed as a, a bit of you know a, a thing that the, the tenant is responsible for and therefore may discount the the rental they may have to take out because of the structure of the points which that may not be good or bad i'm just saying that that's a that's a factor but i think i think the really really tough nut to crack is those that are tenant behavior based and that's that's tough because as a landlord you have only a limited amount of control Right. So I um, just in terms of, of, of action items, reviewing this has been helpful. I think it highlights there's two kind of policy issues that we were particularly concerned with. And I'd suggest we invite uh, Mandy to come and, and talk to us about those so we can give her some input. We're, you know, we're worrying about what we'd be doing. So we're a good source of information for, for the town council as they're trying to, to craft this. Uh, does that seem like a good next move or anyone want to yes, think... highlight anything else? I think it's a good mix move. I was also wondering if it would be useful to have Rob Mara in at the same time, or if you prefer just because a lot of that seems to come under his purview. Steve, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we I think we could certainly invite uh, Mandy in for an update. I can ask Rob if um if he'd be available at that meeting. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Doug, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to add one other thing relative to this point system and things that are sort of tenant related because I think one thing that can help inform some of that is looking at um, you know the the tenant landlord rights and responsibilities and you know sort of what's involved in getting evictions to occur or not occur because I think that the way that structure could be helpful as far as structuring this as well but I think also just understanding we don't want to put our you don't want to put a landlord in a situation that's untenable relative to them uh, being able to evict or not evict, or that's you know it, counter to the way the eviction process works too. So that's that those should marry closely. But I think it might be also instructive in that because uh, the state spent a lot of time thinking about that and, it, and you know that eviction process. It's very long and very slow and et cetera, et cetera. But <clears throat> that notion of ownership of responsibility on both sides, and uh, you know we're sort of exerting ourselves as a sort of third party outside of that, but related to those two. So I think that could be a good frame to. To reference. Okay, Gaston. I uh, I think those are all excellent points, and I, I I think we should suggest to the town council that they create 
um, a tenant's rights and responsibilities, landlord's rights and responsibilities, and neighbor's rights and responsibilities yep. um, that, that match exactly what the policy is in here. Yep. Okay. Great. So our, um, when can we have Mandy in? So our next meeting, we're actually scheduled to meet next Thursday. Is that right? On the 5th at 5? Yeah, well, I guess so, rolling into our um, our next discussion item anyway, um, our, 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 do people anticipate being able to keep the same meeting schedule, the normal one anyway, um, in the new year? Thursday, first and third Thursdays at five. Yeah. That sound good. Okay. So um, in that case, I mean, we can, we can just send her those dates and, and ask which one works for her. Right. See if she's available the 5th or the 19th. And then if Rob is able to come, that would be, might be helpful too. We'll see. Yeah. Or, and if he can't come, he can, you know, give us any feedback based on the yeah. stretch. And um, would the board like to like to meet next week? I don't know if, I don't know of any applications could. that have come in recently. Do we want to, do you want to do a meeting or? I, I'm okay canceling it. Yeah, we could cancel. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> In consideration of your generosity, taking your 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 Thursday morning here for the last yeah. minute renewals. <laughs> so there are no more renewals. There's nothing coming up. Um, there we liquor license. We are through everything. There may be a couple uh, stragglers, for, um, common Vic and such, but I think we're through just about all of them. And um, there's no. I don't see any short term or anything coming in. So um, okay. Great. So we could, if we just want to skip to the 19th, that's totally fine with me. And if anyone else is dying to meet next week, I'm... no. Okay. Great. Um, so we have for our agenda on the 19th, we'll have a pretend, maybe Mandy and maybe, an, let's see. And then Steve, you'll send that notice about the liquor license application around so that everyone can look at it and you'll send it to the lawyer is that right yeah i will send okay. i will um yeah gaston send me the draft we have here i will run that by brian riley and um if he makes any edits um then um i'll let you know but either way i'll send it along to you and you'll see it on the the website and everything okay super thanks great. all right great so um that's it topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting anything no Okay. You know, at some point, it is interesting that this year we've had three ABCC kind oh, of yeah. So, yeah. Uh, violations and nothing from our town. You know, I, I just was curious, like, if that's normal or for other towns or, what, oh, Dylan, were you raising oh, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to cut you off anyway. I was just going to say, I was actually thinking about the same thing. I didn't know if I want to talk about it now or want to get out of here, but uh, I... I was thinking, you know, we, we can't raise our fees to, you know, have something exorbitant for, you know, a one-time kind of fee. We have to match our fees to 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 meet the, the cost of administration. It's like, well, what is, Steve, what's your cost? What do, what do you cost the town here? How do our fees match that? And if we wanted to, say, figure out some type of enforcement where we could actually do enforcement in the town somehow working with the police department and being able to generate some sort of a budget specifically for that, if we could actually look into what our, our, our costs would be and we could set our fees accordingly rather than picking numbers that we we all just kind of like, what if we pick numbers that actually met our, our costs and we could start doing some sort of enforcement? Do we, do we have any idea about like the feasibility of something like that? Now, do you mean um, board members themselves or, or hiring somebody or, or sending me out undercover? What do you? I mean, I, I, I love them all. My, my first option is that we all get badges and guns as board members. <laughs> I don't think that's going to fly. Uh, right. Next one. Uh, I, I, I think it, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the idea that comes to mind immediately is uh, just using the, the Amherst PD and, uh, maybe working with them in some way. I think maybe if we could even have a talk with somebody from uh, Amherst PD, if you, you know anyone over there, Steve, who might be interested in this and have some ideas of how the police department could actually do some sort of uh, effective type of enforcement, I'd 
I'd love to, to, to hear from them and hear what their ideas are. But if we could figure out something like that, figure out what the cost of that would be, that I think would also help guide uh, setting uh, liquor license prices to match it so we can actually afford to pay for these things. Um, and now our numbers are, are generated from what our costs are as opposed to, yeah, like I said before, numbers we like. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely ask uh, Captain Tink from the police department to come in and speak or the chief maybe. Um, I mean, I do know Amherst PD was uh, involved in the uh, Panda East investigation. They were right on board for that. So I do think they they stay fairly on top of things. I mean, obviously, a, a big part of their job is monitoring that activity downtown on the weekends. Yeah. Um, but I'd be uh, happy to invite um, a representative of the police department to come in and discuss what they're doing for enforcement. Yeah, I just yeah. I just thought it was interesting. Cause this is the first year, basically, since I've been on the board that, you know, we had poured up, but we haven't had a lot of ABCC violations and then to have kind of three and one one from pre pandemic. But I just thought that was interesting. And I don't know if it's a black mark on our town or not. But the fact that we're not discovering these things, but the Commonwealth is and I, I just thought it's worth a conversation. I don't know if we need yeah, to step no, up it's, or it's anything, but I, you know, it's I just mean, a... I, 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 I suspect it might have some correlation to how much they're in, in town. Um, I mean, a couple of those um, were rather minor violations. Um, obviously, the Panda East one was was not as minor, but um, no, it's interesting. And uh, yeah, I can definitely ask the police department um, how they're doing. But there is a section on the ABCC website I can forward it around after the meeting of all the um, ABCC decisions and cases, and some of them are very interesting. Other towns, just the the different types of um, you know, because they hear hear all the appeals of of different uh, you know different town enforcement. And they also you know have their own original jurisdiction for um, for their own investigation. So it's interesting to kind of get a sense of what's going on. And um, for its size, I don't think Amherst is um, particularly out of whack. I do think they've probably just been around more, but. Right. Um, any other topics not anticipated? Nope. If not, is um, there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. We're adjourned at 1149. Um, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Steve. See you on the 19th of January. Yeah, thank you all. Happy thank New you. Year. Happy thank New you Year. For coming in on a Happy Thursday New morning and all your work over the year. And um, I hope it's a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.